Good afternoon, everybody. Kurt Risch here, and thanks for joining me on The One Shepherd. So today I'm very excited. We are starting with uh, probably my favorite of all the Gospels, which is the Gospel of John. Uh, We're going to start out by reading the introduction in the Nelson New King James Study Bible. The words read this first, or the words read this first, have taken an important role in the packaging of modern consumer products. Most consumers think life is too short for instruction manuals, so the packagers state it plainly. If you cannot read the manual, at least read this very important part. Read this first. It is for your own good. The Gospel of John makes a similar claim. It is the only book in the Bible that states its purpose clearly and succinctly. It was written to tell individuals how to find eternal life. This clearly identified purpose sets the Gospel of John apart from the other Gospels. It is not so much a life of Jesus as it is a powerful presentation of his deity. Every chapter presents evidence, both signs and statements, for his divine authority. According to John, believing that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, is the beginning of eternal life. What could be more important? John's statement about his gospel is as good as read this first stickers for one entire li- one's entire life. The author. The author of the Gospel of John does not identify himself by name, but his identity be- can be learned from the dialogue recorded in chapter 21, verse 19 to 24. The author calls himself the disciple whom Jesus loved, a designation that occurs four other times in the book. This was the same disciple who wrote these things. The author had to be one of the twelve apostles because he is described as leaning on Jesus' bosom at the Last Supper, an event to which only the apostles were invited. These details imply that he was one of the three disciples closest to Jesus, Peter, James, or John. He could not be Peter because in chapter 21 verse 20 states, Peter looked back and saw this one Jesus loved, and in another place asked a question of him. On the other hand, James was martyred too early to be the author of this gospel. Thus, it is reasonable to conclude that this book was written by the Apostle John. This conclusion is supported by early Christians such as Polycarp from AD 61-155 who was a follower of John. In the 19th century, many critics claimed that the Gospel of John was written around AD 170. Then, in 1935, C.H. Roberts discovered a scrap of papyrus in Egypt containing portions of chapters 18 and 30 with several verses. This disproved their theory. This fragment, the Rylands papyrus, was written around A.D. 125. The Gospel itself must have been written before A.D. 125 or even A.D. 110, allowing time for it to be copied and then carried to Egypt. Conservative scholars typically date the book between A.D. 85 and A.D. 95. The book makes no reference to the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70, implying that such a significant event must have occurred many years earlier. Moreover, the statement about Peter in chapter 21, verse 18 and 23, seems to indicate that the gospel was written when John was an old man. Only then would John have had to explain the death of Peter or contend with a long-standing rumor of the early church. Others have suggested a date before A.D. 70 on the basis of chapter 5, verse 2, which indicates that Jerusalem was still standing. But there is a question about the interpretation of the tense of the verb to be. It is likely that the reason John used the present tense in this verse was to describe Jerusalem vividly not to describe its present condition without more evidence than the tense of the verb in chapter 5, verse 2. The date around A.D. 90 still seems reasonable. The Theology The Gospel of John is a persuasive argument for the deity of Jesus. It concentrates on presenting Jesus as the Word, that is, God, who became a man. Thus, John meticulously records the statements and describes the miracles of Jesus that can only be attributed to God himself. Jesus called himself the bread of life, the light of the world, the door for the sheep, the good shepherd, the resurrection, and the life, the way, the truth, the life, and the true vine. Each of these statements begins with the words, I am, recalling God's revelation of his name, I am, to Moses, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Jesus did not say he gave bread. He said, He is the bread which gives life. He did not say he would teach the way. 
the truth, and the life. Instead, he said, he is the way because he is the truth and the life. These are Jesus' clear claims to be deity. He was not a mere man. Then there are the signs of Jesus' deity. Miracles in the Gospel of John are called signs because they point to Jesus' divine nature. John records seven such signs, changing water to wine, healing a man's son, healing a lame man, multiplying bread and fish, walking on water, healing a blind man, and raising Lazarus. These miracles show that Jesus is God. He possesses power over nature. Other indications of Jesus' deity include the testimonies of John the Baptist, Nathaniel, the blind man, Martha, and Thomas, not to mention Jesus' own words. Jesus was also fully man. His body grew weary, his soul was troubled, and he groaned in his spirit. At the same time, this God-man was Israel's Messiah. Andrew told his brother, We have found the Messiah. Nathanael concluded, You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Even the Samaritan woman testified to Jesus' identity. Jesus, the Messiah, was and is the Savior of the world. John urges us to trust Jesus for eternal life. Our trust is built on our belief that the Father is in Christ and Christ in the Father. Christ came from God and God sent him. And he is the Son of God. John reveals the Bible's most important message. Believe and follow Jesus because he is the way to eternal life. John focuses on, this is Christ in the scriptures, John focuses on Jesus' claim that he was God by including Christ's seven I am statements. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I am the true vine. John doesn't take any chances that we might miss what these I am statements suggest. He records certain occasions when Jesus equates himself with the Old Testament. I am Yahweh. You can't be more specific than this. Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And guys, that's it uh, for our reading of the introduction of the Gospel of John. Uh, Join us tomorrow as we begin with chapter 1 of the Gospel of John. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe below, and may God be with you.